Hello there my friends and welcome back to Ultimate Minecraft. Yes, we're back episode number 15. This is a very momentous occasion for me because this officially makes Ultimate Minecraft the longest running series in terms of episode count on my channel. Yay, I'm so happy I'm having so much fun and this series is not going to end anytime soon. In the last episode we built this awesome barn, this horse stable area and we got some horses to occupy it. I loved it, I absolutely did. And we built some bridges. It, it was a bit of a chaotic episode, I'm not gonna lie. A lot happened in the first seven minutes of that episode. But I love the end results we got to. I even used acacia wood. I never thought I would use acacia wood. But I kinda like it. It works for me. In between episodes, I've also been busy. Just a little bit, not very much. I decorated this hill in between our starter house and our storage room. And I think it looks wonderful. It is very green and alive and I think 90% of it is spawn proof because most of it is either slabbed with stone or covered in leaves. And it looks fantastic. I love it. I absolutely hated that dead hill and I just didn't know what to put there between these two buildings. But I think some dense tree edge that works perfectly for it. And I'm very, very happy with it. <sighs> I'm just gonna have to sleep before we can actually be productive today. So give me a second. So, what is it that we are going to get up to today? Well, my friends, we're gonna do two things. Two things off of our list again, and as you can see, I have filled it up again since the last episode where we actually took three of these things off. Today I think we're only going to take two of them off. The first one being, I would like to get a beacon. We need to go to the nether and get wither skeleton skulls. I don't have a single one yet, so that is high priority. Secondary, I think today we are building an iron farm. Yes, and if you're here for the iron farm, I'm going to try and figure out how to give you guys a timestamp marker thing. You can go ahead and jump onto that for the iron farm tutorial. But first, we need to go to the nether. To do that, there is a little bit of prep that we can do. Uh, we're going to need a lot of food. Luckily, I have a bunch of golden carrots, so I'm just going to take a lot. That's probably going to be a lot more than I'm going to need. I'm going to take some spare rockets as well, and we're going to need our chest plate. Um, I don't want to be running around fighting wither skeletons with my wings on. And I'm going to take two shulker boxes, both of them empty, just in case. But another thing we can take, just because I have a lot of them, are these instant health potions. Uh, I've raided a couple of end cities by now, so, you know, instant health? I have them to spare. We're going to take them, just in case we need them. And then we get to use our new bridges that we built in the last episode to make our way to our nether portal. And here it is, the nether fortress. Now begins the fun. Yeah, I know you guys see me. Now begins the fun of exploring this thing over and over again in search of wither skeletons to slay. Not blazes. I don't need to slay blazes. I just need wither skeletons. Thank you very much, please. And thank you. Nope, that's where a blaze spawner is. So yeah, now we just run around. Now, obviously I do have looting three on my sword. I would not recommend trying to actively do this without looting three. The drop rate is so rare. And if I remember to do that during editing, I'll put the numbers up on the screen now. But the drop rate is so ridiculously rare that without looting three, it you might as well just not do it. Um, so I highly, highly recommend having looting three when you're trying to get wither skeleton skulls. Particularly since you need three of them. Aha! There is our first victim. Two of them! Excellent. Come on, boys. 
Now I do not have smite on my sword. Nope, we weren't that lucky. But it's okay, my sword is pretty strong. Okay, so that was our first two wither skeletons and we were not lucky enough to get a skull immediately. <sighs> Buckle up folks, this could be a long ride. One thing I would highly recommend you do is turn on your subtitles when you're doing this. Because if you look at the bottom right of my screen now... Where are you? You were- there it is! Wither skeleton rattles. To the ear, it might sound like a regular skeleton. But your subtitles will let you know that it is in fact not just a regular skeleton. And then you can try and find it according to those subtitles. Just be very careful, there you are, if you crawl up onto the roofs of fortresses that these things don't knock you off when you fight them. Nope, still no skull from that guy. I did see another one up there, so let's figure out how to get over there next. And I- oh, hello! Where'd you come from? Oh wow, oh wow. Drink, 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 drink. Oh! I was on half a heart! <sighs> I am so glad I brought those potions. I need to pay more attention. That was way too close. Alright, skeletons. Where are you guys hiding? Ah, here's one. Skull? No. Oh, hello. Snuck around that corner, you did. Nope. Ooh, there's one. Hello, sir. <gasps> skull! My first skull! I think I'm gonna try and count how many wither skeletons I fought up to this point in record or in editing Spooky Scary Skeleton. And then I'll know how long it took me to get the first one. Give you guys an idea, it's about 14 minutes of recording at this point before I finally got my first skull. 14 minutes of actually running around this fortress. So I think I've been in this area for so long that I filled the mob cap over there. So I'm just gonna come and fly off into this area a little bit. We're gonna chill here for 10 seconds and then fly back over to that fortress and keep going. Hopefully this refreshes the spawns around here. And I already see a group of skeletons up here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is not going well, potion. Quickly. Okay, potion. Another potion. Whew, I'm glad I brought these potions. I didn't get a skull from that? Darn. Okay, that wasn't my brightest moment. Hey! Okay, Mark, that is skull number two in just over 30 minutes and I don't know how many skeletons. Alright, carrying on. I think there are a couple more skeletons up above here. So let's um, make our way up there so we can go ahead and slaughter them all. Hi buddy, you gonna be number three? No. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. I I get it. I'm I'm not wanted here. Ow. Okay, my health got a little low there again. I need to be careful. No, no, no. Ow! Damn it! Yep, okay. I died. Um that that's not good, but in the last episode, we went into the end and we got a couple of spare elytras out of it, so I think I can make my way back. I'm gonna need that book. 
Uh, and I'm gonna need a mending book. I don't have levels to do this. Darn it! Okay, guess we're not putting books on it just yet. Uh, let's take some rockets. We'll take some carrots and... Do I have golden armor? Yeah, not great golden armor. That'll do. Um, I can take some good leggings. That's an okay helmet. That's an okay chest plate. Okay, uh, actually the helmet is useless because I'm gonna put the gold helmet on, so... That'll do. Okay, let's go get our stuff. So, I'm pretty sure I kept flying off in this direction. Uh, yeah, here's my stuff. Oh, I died so close to the edge. I really hope that I didn't have stuff that fell into the void. Okay, let's let's make use of some of these shulker boxes. Let's put that down. Let's just dump stuff in there for now and then we can organize it once I've collected it all. Okay, I think I've got everything. I even hopped down here just to check if anything did fall over the edge and it doesn't look like it. Mm, I don't see anything else here on any of these ledges. Okay, I think we have everything then. So here we have a shulker box full of some stuff. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put those two skulls in there because I don't want to lose them again. We have plenty of carrots, some of it can go in there. Uh, that's spare. That I'm gonna put back on because it's a lot better than what I have. All of this can also go in there. Okay, we are reorganized. To a pretty decent degree. Oh, happy days! That's the third skull right there. Ah, oh, okay. Stop the timer right there. And the skeleton count. We get to go home now. Well, I was greedy. And I died. Let's go fetch my stuff a second time. At least this time it was inside the fortress and not... God knows where in the nether. Yep, here's all my stuff. I died in a pretty okay place. I think I actually withered away. I don't think anything in particular got to me. So yeah, it, it, uh, I had to die. It was okay. As okay as it can be. On the bright side, we have the third wither skull. This time, really, I'm leaving. I'm not gonna be greedy. I'm going home. Oh, it is good to be back home. And we are home with three wither skulls. Wither skeleton skulls. Sorry. We got them. That was stressful. It's actually the next morning. I had to go straight to bed after getting back last night. It was just... My anxiety was through the roof. Anyway, it was about 55 minutes of running around um, in that fortress getting wither skeletons to spawn and to kill. And I ended up killing 52 of them to get three skulls. It felt like a really tough slug to get it done but actually it worked out to be about 5.7 percent drop rate for me which is actually better than what looting 3 does marginally but i i need to do something a little bit more relaxing to get my head back in the game this morning so i've decided i'm gonna fish so fishing was boring but I think I'm in the right headspace now to get fighting again, to be aggressive, to have my sword out. Yes, I killed a creeper. Um, and I think we can go ahead... No man, give me those skulls. And then we need to go and fight the wither. I think... 
look, fighting the Wither these days is pretty easy if you know how to do it. You don't need anything fancy. But I do have a potion of strength. That one. I'll just drink a potion of strength before I do it. And we should be good. Okay, let's see if we can get this done pretty swiftly, shall we? 3x3 three three box. Uh, I need to eat and fill my hunger before I do anything rash. There we go. One. Nope, that's not gonna do the job for us. Two. And three. Okay, wither spawned. Drink a potion. I have my smite axe and I have a bow. Boom, there's the first explosion. Okay, now we can arrow the guy, get his attention. Whoa! Hello, sir. Come down. Okay. Youch. Gravel. Okay, let's go ahead and axe him. And that that was the wither. Done! Easy stuff. I just discovered something very interesting while tidying up. There we go. This chest plate has thorns on it. And if I hit the armor stand, I get hurt by the thorns. What? That's definitely interesting. Huh. Now that we have a nether star acquired, we can go ahead and build ourselves a beacon. We'll need three obsidian and five pieces of regular clear glass to do this. Come up to a crafting bench and there it is. Boom, a beacon. Well, now that we have a beacon, we have one small problem in that well, I definitely don't have enough iron to make a beacon base. Hence why we're building an iron farm in today's episode. But I want to dig a hole for the iron farm. So I'm going to need the beacon. But I don't have a base. Well, that is where you are wrong. Because I have emeralds to spare. You will need two stacks of blocks, either iron, gold, emerald, diamond, or netherite. I believe those are the blocks you can use. Two stacks and 36 blocks to build a beacon base. So, now I can go ahead and dig a really, really big hole to put an iron farm in. That's some way to spend two and a half hours. Yep, I dug a big hole, my friends. I dug a very, very big hole. It The hole only took me about an hour and 18 minutes, but um, I had to mend both my pickaxes about two thirds of the way through it, and uh, we really need a better XP farm than that skeleton grinder over there, because that just took ages. Anyway, I've at this point dug a hole and this hole is exact measurements 23 wide in that direction 33 long in this direction and it is currently at 23 blocks deep I need it to be 21 but I left two blocks of height for me to put something back here on the top layer to cover it up in the end 
Because yes, I want to build this iron farm underground where it is out of sight and out of mind and I can just have all of the iron and poppies come up to a chest and I can loot it from there. We did get a bunch of resources from it. A lot of dirt terraforming for days in the future. I like this because I ran out of andesite when I built my mob farm a while ago. We've got three full shulker boxes of, well, okay, two full shulker boxes and a little bit of cobblestone, which is handy because I'm also running low on that. And then I've got four full shulker boxes of stone. Brilliant to build with down the line and a couple of valuable, more valuable resources than the rest. But for now, I think it's time for us to start building. And for that purpose, I do have another shulker box with everything I'm going to need in it to build this farm today. Now, just a quick disclaimer, the farm I'm about to build and that I'm about to show you is not of my own design. It is actually a logical geek boy design and I will be following it fairly true to his design. His tutorial will be linked down in the description, so go ahead and check that out if you need it. So a very important thing to remember here is that you need, from where your villagers will be standing and sleeping, eight blocks all around them where nothing can spawn, where nothing is spawnable, right? So the height is also very important and I've done all of these calculations and I have a little doodle on a piece of paper next to me. So the very first thing we need to do is go up by five blocks and we're going to start by building our zombie containment area first. So we want to go up here five blocks. I've put five pieces of scaffolding down. Up off the ground and then we want to place our very first wall there and a second wall off of that now I'm gonna be building this thing perpendicular to the length so this is the short side this is the long side perpendicular to the long side around the walls then we can build our actual containment pen for the zombie we need to put water down there and we need it to be flowing like this because if it's flowing the zombie will be bouncing up and down which is good for us following that we need to bring this up by two blocks all the way around so that we have a total of three blocks of stained glass or regular glass or whatever you want it to be in this exact position okay i think i'm ready to try and catch myself a zombie area below me has been lit up with torches so we shouldn't be getting any spawns down there I have a trapdoor over here so I can fit through underneath it but the zombie will not be able to and then this trapdoor I can flip open and the zombie should just fall in there uh, except I'm a, an idiot that top trapdoor needs to be on this block so the zombie can get there okay Perfect. Now I think I'm ready. I've also got a staircase leading down into my hole so that I can get a zombie down there. I can lead it in and I do have my name tag ready to name the zombie. The only thing I now need is for it to become night. The one time I need it to be night. Right now it isn't. Okay so we've got a zombie over here. Um, it's a bit of a walk for him to get to this side, but that's okay. We can do that. Let's just get rid of the spider so we don't have any obstacles here for us. Come on, Mr. Zombie. And then we need to carefully, without falling down here ourselves... Whoa, hello. Guide the zombie all the way over here. Come on, sir. Hey, okay, now we have a zombie in there. Let's go ahead and give him his name. Such a handsome name, that. And now I need to sleep to get rid of the night. Once you have your zombie in place, you can rest at ease, because that's probably the hardest part done. Now we can go ahead and just block him off a little bit, and we can get rid of those blocks at some later stage. I actually think I've built my roof one block too high. I don't think it needs to be that tall, but anyway. 
We just don't want any villagers to be able to see the zombie, so we're gonna hide him away in dirt. And then we need to come out from this block. We're gonna go one, two, three, four blocks out, put down the fifth one, and it is on that fifth one that we want to put our first bed. Now just remember, I'm following uh, Logical Geek Boy's tutorial, so if any of this doesn't make sense to you, please go and check out his tutorial. This is his farm, he ex does a much better job of explaining it than I do, I'm sure. So, then we need to put two more beds down. There we go. Okay, that's the first side now has beds. So, with our beds in place now on both sides and our zombie sun shield roof drop down a block, come and stand underneath one of the side beds. Take a step out and a step to the side and there you want to place temporary blocks. And what you're looking for is a temporary block that is on the same Y level as the bottom of your bed. So now we have that on both sides. Coming up then, we need to go two blocks higher than this. So one, two. And then on top of this block is where we're going to start building the spawning platform for our iron golems. Next step, on the side away from your zombie, right, so this side, we want to come and place four glass blocks on this edge and three glass blocks on this edge. That just makes the platform a little bit bigger for the water to flow. And then here, this is uh, where we're going to have three hoppers and the killing corner for our golems. Lastly then, you can go ahead and place another row of glass all the way around because we now want to build a wall of glass up above all of this. Once you've built up a too high wall of glass all the way around, and it has to be glass because you don't want anything spawning in these blocks, on the side opposite from your collection point, where I'm going to be putting three hoppers later, we can come and put a water source over here and it'll flow all the way over here, but not onto any of the hoppers, which is exactly what you want. Next, in this corner, you can come ahead and place just a couple more pieces of glass. Just need five, you just want it a little bit wider than what it was initially. Then you need three signs, place them just like so, and then a lava bucket in the middle. That is our spawning platform done and complete, aside from the hoppers and the collection system. So any golems that spawn in here will be pushed into the lava that lava will kill them and then their drops will be collected by the hoppers later on. Now, we need to replicate it on the other side. Once you have both spawning platforms done, you can go ahead and start preparing your storage system and all those things, which I have already done. I've linked up hoppers in both corners that all funnel into the center and I have a dropper system over there that will drop all of the iron and poppies funneled into it into a bubble elevator which brings it up to these four chests over here. So far, nothing. But that is because we do not have villagers in there yet. You can see I've built up scaffolding and some dirt over there. The idea being I need to bring my villagers over and then I'm going to drop them into these holes. I have one on each side for each of the spawning platforms. Drop a villager in, put him in a boat row them down into their bed area and then when it gets close to nighttime of course it is getting close to nighttime when I'm not ready for it to be nighttime um, we break them out of their boats they go to sleep and then I get rid of all of the dirt and the floor the scaffolding and everything around them as well for anyone not following logical geek boys video down in the description has a much simpler method of getting his villagers in place Fingers crossed he goes to the right place. Oh, I hate that they go so much faster than I do. Okay, we have our first villager in. We do have to do this one at a time because if I have two villagers in here and I put a boat down, then both of them are going to get in the boat and I need to be able to get into a boat. So, okay, villager out, boat down, villager in boat. Nope. 
Don't suffocate, sir. And then I need to go in this direction. Yay, now hopefully, because I can't see a thing, I don't end up falling off of this, because it's going to be a much bigger pain to try and get the villager. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm already where I need to be. It's going to be a much bigger pain to get the villager up from the bottom again. There we go. F5 mode for the win, my friends. Um, okay, we're gonna just park your boat there, sir. And then I get out of it. That's one down. I have five more to go. Okay, the sun is setting. It has basically set. Now is our time to act. We need to come down here. And we need to break each of these guys out of their boats. Um, without them getting out. So can I... Yep, I can crawl. There we go. Get in your beds, guys. Please. Okay. I'm going to assume that you guys are going to behave and get in your beds eventually. Uh, in the meantime, there they go, they're in their beds. Okay, so what we're gonna do is while they are in their beds, I'm gonna hop down here. I'm gonna break the scaffolding, right? Because then they don't have floors to go to. And then we need to get rid of the dirt that is around them. Now as long as they cannot see the zombie, which is why you cover up, they should just stay in bed without any issues there we go and then they whoa mustn't have any place to go when the sun comes up or when the zombies freak them out okay so that's one side done now for the other side there we go okay so it is now currently daytime so you can see all six of our villagers are now standing on their beds and that's where they will stay. They will, theoretically, I hope, fingers crossed, never move from there. Uh, they will just lay down in their beds when it is nighttime. Hello, cat! Uh, lay down in their beds when it is nighttime and once I release a zombie we should start seeing some golems spawning above their heads. There's one and there's two. The farm works. It works, it works, it works. That does finally mean that we can come over here and take down that sign and our first red sign gets to come off of the wall, my friends. And with that, my friends, two dying golems above my shoulders, I think we call it an episode. Thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button, that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about today's episode. Until next time everyone, have an absolutely brilliant one.